knowledge and today's topic is something of bit esg reporting honestly speaking i had to little work hard to get panelists today and i was lucky to get one of the cs with a uh, good experience who is involved in esg reporting and i request more and more cs to take get actively involved in esg reporting because it will be the buzzword for the future and it will be part and parcel of business strategy marketing success and funding and how it will be i request uh, saloni in between to give a view also on that topic uh yes yes such an important topic and it gaining importance so i thought that it should be taken and uh, today we have the topic we have uh, with us ms saloni fernandez to briefly introduce saloni is an associate member of icsi and a law graduate by qualification she has more than 11 years of experience in the field of corporate law and compliance she is currently working as the company secretary and ag and statutory compliance at asian paints limited welcome saloni thank you thank and you for speaking yeah thanks we have with our own mr bala and today's presentation is with ayushi who generally is coordinator but today she is presenting herself and i request all participants to ask the question as and when the topic is going so it will be more interactive and i request for saloni to say few word on the topic her view how she see the future of this esg reporting and then mr bala and then aishi you can start your presentation okay sure thank you deepthi uh, and matamata for this opportunity uh so i'll uh, generally be speaking out of the limited experience that i have and i'm very grateful to be interacting with my fellow company secretaries on this uh, upcoming topic uh so simply put uh, esg reporting is the disclosure of environmental social and corporate governance initiatives which are taken up by companies and as with all the disclosures its uh, main purpose is to shed light on companies esg initiatives while improving investor transparency and inspiring other organizations to do the same uh if you see it from a global perspective institutional investors are you know the key stakeholders or who are currently driving the momentum around esg actions and the reporting in the corporate world uh the range of issues which uh, investors uh, you know continue to look at or are interested in uh, to know about the organizations include diverse topics such as carbon emissions such as human rights records and board diversity at the same time uh, given this uh, requirement which is coming in from the investors to move from non financial parameters to the parameters around esg the esg reporting framework is becoming more and more diverse and more and more complex um as you may have seen generally in an indian context the common means of reporting on esg has been either by way of the annual sustainability reports that companies have been publishing or through the uh, integrated reports so which are based on gri standards and on the integrated reporting framework uh, i guess today's uh, the focus of today's topic which ayushi is going to you know uh, be detailing on is going to be around this uh, brsr reporting framework the business responsibility and sustainability reporting framework which is all set to replace the current uh, brr so before i uh, you know set the stage for uh, ayushi i just wanted to say that uh, brr um, as such the business responsibility report was not that well received by the industry uh, because although it intended to be based on uh, esg disclosures it was it you know more entirely focused on the nine uh, sustainability principles of mca and resorted to a yes or no uh, questionnaire kind of approach which actually did not give a lot of uh, meaningful data about esg uh, to the industry and to investors as such the brsr framework which sebi has recently introduced on the other hand is totally uh, 
uh, aligned with the GRI uh, standard requirements. It also, uh, you know, will as a result provide a lot of qualitative and quantitative data on ESG, along with being based on the MCA's ESG guidelines. So um, I think um, this this reporting framework is a welcome uh, initiative. Uh, from an uh, Indian context. And uh, I look forward to uh, learning a thing or two and from the audience here and also from Ayushi. Um, uh, that's Adipti from my side. Thank you. Mr. Bala, your view on the topic. Good morning to all of you. I have a great pleasure in welcoming you all to this program of Meta Meta on my own because and also on behalf of Meta Meta. Some of the we company secretaries, we are very much concerned about, you know, our core compliance activities, company laws, and other things, etc. and other things and all. Anything which is new, we generally, you know, don't take that much leap into the future. That is one thing. And second thing is today, company secretary is actually a license between all the stakeholders, especially so with the shareholders. Now, the most of the shareholders, especially before they invest in any company, they are interested looking into whether the company is a compliant company, whether the company is having a good corporate governance, whether the company is doing good for the social responsibility, etc. All the things they are doing. From that perspective, what is happening is there has been an increased interest on the focus of environmental, social, and governance performance of the organization nowadays. It is not ESG reporting has not been there. It has been there actually long ago because most of the companies in India, they have been actually following what we call the various global reporting based on GRI reporting, CDP or TCFD. They've been actually doing it because it's all started from 1992 when we have the Rio conclave, but it actually cropped up. And in India, it came actually somewhere in the year 2009, MCA has actually brought out. And then subsequently what happens, MCA has actually brought out a disclosure norm based on the national guidelines on responsibility and the business contact. So probably India wanted to introduce its own homework, it's want to get the, their own standards. So SEBI for the first time has actually come out what we call BRSR reporting, framing the first of its kind framework for India and this report. Now, this is actually beginning mandatory for all the companies, thousand top listed companies from the financial year commencing on or after 1st April 2020. That is from the current year. I have seen a couple of the reports for the financial year, which are under 21, calendar year, or following January to something. Even some of the companies, even well known companies, some or other, they said, okay, it's all applicable only from 1st April 21. Our year started 1st January. So let us postpone it. Let us watch what others are doing. We'll do it. They're postponed. The question here comes in when it comes to the disclosure because the BRSR homework is talking about various things. A, it talks about the mandatory disclosure. It talks about the voluntary disclosure. It talks about the leadership qualities. It talks about many, many things. Now the question is, how much company wants to disclose, how many companies doesn't want to disclose, whether they want to make the restrictive disclosures, or whether they want to say half the disclosures, all those questions are coming. Today it is being a very, very new topic. For the first time, it has actually come out. Very few companies have come out with this reporting because the year goes on when we see more and more annual general meeting, we we'll have the opportunity to see many reports which are actually coming up from the companies. Really speaking, first of all, we need to understand the framework. Second thing is, there are challenges, there are issues, there are various things on transparency and disclosure. All these things are all involved in this. I think, to my knowledge, the company secretary actually should get into what we call the real, real corporate teams because it is building up not only the environmental, it is also the social, it is also the governance practices. Because really speaking, all over the world, company secretaries are actually now moving as a governance professional. Because you all may be knowing, many of you may be also done your ICSA course from UK. UK Company Secretaries Institute has been renamed as the Governance Institute. The Chartered Secretaries, 
have been actually now called as a governance professional. It is also so in Australia, it is also so in New Zealand. So we are all actually moving towards what we call the governance professional. So in the best interest of our organization, I think we should take a lead. We should understand because Saloni is the one who is really doing it. I hats up to her actually. She has got a good practical experience. We have the knowledge of opportunity of sharing her practical knowledge in this. As she said very clearly, we are all in the learning process. I think it's a good opportunity for all of us to learn together and get going in this. That's all I would like to say. Thank you, Mr. Mala. Ayushi, just start. Yes. Good morning, all. Today's topic is ESG reporting. We will be discussing what exactly is ESG reporting, disclosure framework, what exactly ESG investment means, BRSR report, etc. Let's start with what exactly ESG means. ESG refers to environment, social and governance factor that mainly include issues related to climate change, global health and environment, which covers a wide spectrum of issues that originally does not belong to corporate world, but has a great impact on various economical sectors. The abbreviation ESG was first introduced in 2004 by United Nations, which uh, says that to win, one should care for its surroundings, which means every organization should take various measures to protect the environment, social and governance factors to have an impact on society. Further, we will discuss what exactly is ESG reporting. ESG reporting means the disclosure of data co governing the company's operation in three sectors, environment, social, and corporate governance. The purpose and value of ESG reporting is that ESG reporting ensures the companies to consider their impact on sustainability issues and enables them to be transparent about the risk and opportunities they will face while reporting in the annual report to the stakeholders. What exactly ESG reporting helps to find out following factors? Human uh, environment factors considers driving efficiency, innovation, carbon footprint, climate uh, stability. Uh, further, social uh, factors consist of human capi uh, capital, community, diversity and inclusion, digital upskilling, etc. Governance factors include risk management, anti-bribery and corruption, corporate governance and transparency. I will let us go slow because topic is not easy. So be relaxed okay. because be slow. One okay, has to digest the thing. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Importance of ESG reporting. ESG reporting helps investors to avoid companies that might possess a greater financial risk due to their environment performance or other social or governance practices and assist them in, in taking informal decision while they are investing their hard-earned money. Let's discuss how to do ESG Can reporting. I'll go to the earlier slide, please. Yes. Ye yes, ma'am. So you have to find ESG reporting helps to find out following factors. So these factors you have to discuss, right? Yes. So so many human capital, community, diversity, inclusion, digital. Right. We are taking this later on in a detail. Yes, ma'am. Okay, please go. In fact, she is actually putting the reporting format for the information of the participants what is actually introduced by the CB in BRSR that we can actually go through it, that is my idea. Steps involved in ESG reporting are selecting sectors, companies, or practices on criteria, ESG criteria, ESG performance relative to industrial associates, generally screening accepted, mean, uh, minimum screening is done by accepting ESG standards, ESG factors and uh, financial analysis, solving uh, specific social or uh, environmental problems. Companies have to do ESG practice and, and policies by uh, following adopting global reporting initiative standards and various frameworks respectively. 
Um, so uh, I just want to add the point over here, if you don't mind, Deepti, can I? Yeah, yeah, please, please. I need that. Please. So uh, on uh, how to do ESG reporting, as a, just out of my experience for my fellow company secretaries, uh, basically for us to contribute in this area, uh, you know, the primary requirement is to have a certain level of business understanding. So understanding how the supply chain works, understanding uh, the various GRI standards and uh, what are the raw materials that uh, go into, you know, the production aspect and how uh, how is the whole, uh, you know, who are your raw material suppliers? Where are you sourcing them from? You know, if you look at it from an environment perspective, what are the emissions which are uh, which you are generating? What are the various other laws which are getting attracted? So these are uh, some of the areas where we as company secretaries can definitely, um, obviously in the industry more so, uh, can definitely uh, get some understanding. And uh, surely I see a lot of opportunities for us to contribute over here. Uh, lesser said, um, social and government are some uh, you know those two indicators really come naturally to us because uh, a lot of us company secretaries are involved in uh, CSR related compliances we also attend the CSR committee meetings we are very much involved in uh, you know sort of uh, going through the project seeing what all projects are qualifying for CSR etc and governance as uh, you know uh, Mr. Bala and Deepti said earlier are our forte. So uh, I see a lot of opportunity for us to contribute in this area, uh, given the general understanding about various uh, legal provisions that we have, and also the access to information that uh, we have as you know people attending board meetings or people generally having the uh, idea about how the organization is working. So we can say that uh, CS is expected to understand the business, business processes, each and every stage of production, the applicable law. And I think it's a kind of requirement of the day because if, uh, uh, if we see that, that even the secretarial audit, we cover all the other laws applicable. Yeah. So the time has come now CS has to move as a total compliance head as well as all the laws applicable whether we execute he or she execute or not but at least get acquainted get proper uh, reporting get knowledge how the business runs and all that right because as uh, the second slide if you i wish you can go back to the second slide uh, yeah, like human capital, community, diversity, inclusion. This diversity and inclusion require a lot of understanding. Digital upskilling, transparency, anti-bribery also, and risk management, climate stability. And so each and every area of the organization, like uh, as we discussing earlier, that accounts, finance, and legal knows each and every stage of manufacturing each and every department, organization structure, now CS can't afford. And specifically, when you are the KMP of Companies Act and ESG is part of Companies Act, was indirectly, we are also considered uh, import, uh, you know, responsible. Like it is like CSR2, all the, you know, implementing institution, all the society and all become under, indirectly come under the compliances. Same way like ESG reporting under the companies and all this report is also under responsibility comes directly and indirectly. All right, Saloni, because we as a CS also sign these reports and all that to annual report. Yes. See, not only that, if you all recall it, it is a long time back. Many of the old timers will like me recall, even if you will also recall, there was a shoe company called the Nike. Nike shoe, they were actually using what you call the child labor. That has actually become an issue. When it has become an issue, all over the countries across the world, they have actually boycotted in buying the Nike shoes because they were using the child labor, which is again the code of contact. And ultimately, they have to take the step, they have to redesign their code of contact, they have to stop using the child level. This has greatly impacted the company's revenue, company's reputation, company's brand image, everything has got affected it. And second thing is, as you rightly say here, company secretary has been actually, his functions have been actually named in the company's act itself. 
one of the function which is actually said here the company secretary has to aid in ensuring all the applicable laws to the organization he is not the person who is actually to comply with it but he has to get complied all the things by help of the other team members that is what it is expected here so naturally the company secretary has to get when you are getting esg he cannot be aloof from the esg and it is more so because it is not only running it is also even talking about the diversity inclusion now you remember when the women director has come actually for the first time what happened in many companies they actually put for their name sake there you know their family members of the uh, you know tick up option of the adding the women director and subsequently again sebi after getting into the thing they have to come out with the revised circular saying that independent women director is required to be appointed so these are all the things which are actually coming here so and most of the company secretary they are only writing the various board reports corporate governance report and management discussion analysis report they are only bringing out so naturally from the transparency from the disclosure point of view it is better the company secretary should get involved in the business activities he should get to know what is the business he should get to know the thing that's what it is referred here that is going to be the order of the day in future also okay i see you can go yes a reporting standard framework in which esg reporting can be done are as follows global reporting initiative sustainability accounting standard board task force for climate related financial disclosure climate disclosure standard board business responsibility and sustainability report which is known as brsr which is introduced by sebi integrated reporting standards science based target initiatives and un principle for responsible in investment disclosure of esg data is the first step towards reporting framework indian companies and investor usually adopt two key reporting frameworks global reporting initiative and business responsibility and sustainability report which is provided a, a set of standards to make sustainability information across a, across a wide range of issues let's uh, uh, discuss evolution of reporting standards by sebi on uh, 10th may 2021 sebi issued a circular issued uh, is introducing the business responsibility and sustainability report which replaced brr report uh, the new reporting format outlines mandatory esg policies and requirement for top 1000 listed companies by market capitalization from financial year 2022 to 23 the new format is based on nine principles stipulated by national guidelines on responsible business conduct the evolution of reporting standard can be seen as an attempt to bring improvements in environment social and governance practices to help companies and investors to identify risk related to environment social and governance factor further introduction of esg in india the most widely adopted esg framework in the world is global reporting initiative which was founded in 1997 which has been adopted in 144 countries in india mca brought esg reporting in 2009 issued the voluntary guidelines on corporate social responsibility as a step towards main, uh, mainstreaming the concept of business responsibility in july 2011 MC issues national voluntary guidelines on social environment and economic responsibilities of business in the year 2012 sebi mandated top 100 listed entities by market capitalism to file business responsibility reports in the year 2015 uh, the requirements for filing brr was progressively extended to top 500 listed companies and in 2021 in the board meeting held by sebi uh, on march uh, 25 2021 the new framework was introduced which is known as business responsibility and sustainability report uh, applicable to top 1000 listed entities from the financial year 2022 to 23 uh, so i just wanted to add a couple of things over here so as you can notice that uh, you know by mandating uh, a thousand top thousand listed companies to now uh, adhere to the brsr uh, report uh, format it actually just uh, conveys sebi's uh, you know a uh, rigor that it wants to bring in and uh, the context that 
is to be set over here that BRSR and ESG reporting is here to say here to stay and there is a lot of ask which is coming uh, from institutional investors for companies to come out there and report on this topic and that can very well be seen by the large uh, you know uh, list of companies that uh, SEBI is intending to cover by uh, you know mandating this for top thousand listed companies from the financial year 20 to 23 onwards and just to add over here that uh, in 2017, SEBI also uh, recommended uh, on a voluntary basis for companies to adopt uh, uh, a way of ESG reporting, which was under the IIRC framework. So integrated report is something that a lot of Indian companies have adopted and have been reporting from 2017-18 onwards. This would, you know, the integrated report is something that is your, I mean, that is continuing and uh, a lot of Indian companies are reporting under the format and BRSR actually just takes the reporting context a step forward. A structure of business responsibility and sustainability report. Generally, BRSR report consists of three sections and nine principles. The first section includes general information about companies, details of entity, product services, marketed by the company, employees, CSR, report, etc. Uh, section two includes financial Sorry, details. Uh, I would just want to add one thing uh, over here. So I wish if you could go to the page. Yes. So yeah. basically, uh, the way the BRSR report is structured, uh, as we mentioned earlier, it is kind of divided into two parts. So one are, first is the essential indicators on which you are required to uh, disclose or do, uh, mandatorily if you are adopting BRSR. And then the other is the leadership indicators. So uh, on all of these sections that Ayushi is you know, going to take us through, so leaving aside general information and thereafter the financial information and human rights and customers related sections, all of that. So uh, the essential indicators, uh, you know, kind of speak about what you as an organization are doing. So it is about you with your direct stakeholders. It is with you, your employees, with this, um, with you and your uh, the society at large in which you are functioning. The leadership indicators are something that uh, you know really sets uh, you as an organization apart. If you are doing those kind of initiatives, those are um, you know morely attuned with the scope three uh, emissions related norms, etc., which are there in place. Which is more to do with what you are doing for your other stakeholders. Say for example suppliers as such uh, what are you doing for the world in general uh, what are the you know some initiatives or the good practices that you're trying to drive for not only you yourself as an organization or for the group but for also the other stakeholders who are directly or indirectly engaging with you so uh, this is essentially the way in which this reporting framework is bifurcated yeah Yushi. Uh, section uh, second sta uh, states financial details of the company, which includes paid up capital, total turnover, total profit and taxes. The new format requires disclosure for companies to demonstrate structures, policies and processes uh, uh, by adopting national guidelines on responsible business conduct principle and conduct element. The new disclosure requires independent audit evaluation should be done by external agencies of the working of the company's policies. The new policy does not allow internal agency to conduct evaluation or audit. If we actually look at it, all the policy in the new policy, earlier it was actually talking financial related details. That's all. But the new policy it is not only talking the financial data, it's talking the management, but also the process which are actually involved. And especially it is also talking the various policies, etc. As Saloni puts it here, it is how the companies are actually having their own policy to bring the change over it, how they are going to implement it, what is the process are involved, that is what it is required to be disclosed to us. Yeah, so it's just taking it a way forward from a tick mark based approach which BRR had. So in BRR, these uh, there was there were these similar disclosures which were and there. Not only that, this policy also requires yeah. whatever the policies are framed here, that is also required to be yeah. actually disclosed through the web link, yeah. so that it is made to known to the public. That is also a requirement here. Right. Yeah. Uh, section C covers other details 
uh, other detail consists of subsidiary information related to subsidiary companies, business responsibility initiatives by parent company, etc. Section D covers business responsibility information, details of directors responsible for implementation of business responsibility, head principal, vice BS, uh, business responsibility policies, and coverage of nine principal governance related to business responsibility. Uh, it is, can be observed that, that if they are asking business responsibility not only for all the company but even the subsidiary. So, as a group, as a management, as a promoter, what is your policy that they are observing in this way? Right, thanks. Uh, section E covers principal wise performance. Principal ones cover ethics, transparency, and accountability. The disclosure is required to be made as per the provision of Regulation 30 of SEBI LODR Regulation 2015. Principal 2 consists of uh, goods and services that should cover, uh, uh, should be a safe and disclosure relating to percentage of uh, R&D capital expenditure investment made by the company in specific technology to improve environment and social impacts of the company through its product. Principle three consists of well-being of all employees. Sorry, Be um, Ayushi, can I just add over here? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yeah, so um, under principle one and two, like I mentioned that along with speaking about the initiatives that you're taking for yourself, for the group uh, that you're talking about, as Deepthi mentioned, you are also required to speak about certain programs and initiatives that you have taken up for your value chain partners. So this essentially qualifies as a leadership indicator, wherein, uh, you know, if there are certain programs programs, etc. that you're taking up wherein uh, your value chain partners are attending those programs, you know, sort of speak about them. You can also, uh, under the leader leadership indicators, disclose about certain uh, policies and programs which you have in place for managing conflict, uh, not only at the board level, but at an organization level. So uh, conflict when it comes to the suppliers that you're working with and other value chain partners. So these are some of the uh, leadership indicators which have been put in place. And you're right, actually, in case of the principle two, not only talking the thing, it's also talking what is the improvement and the impact it is going to have on the environmental and the social impact. Yeah. That is what specifically it has to be brought over here under the principle two. Right. Uh, and the impact of principle three talks, if there is anything is going the other way, and what are the measures the company is actually taken by the company to rectify that, bring it back. That is what it is to be talked about here. But the only thing is here, they are talking about the, you know, comparative figure between the last year and the this year. That will be a problematic thing because comparative figure may not be available at this juncture because it is going to be the first year of the report. Right. Right. Ayushi. Uh, principle three covers uh, well-being of all employees, including the value chain. Measures taken by company relating to well-being of employees in current year along with details of previous year. Principle 4 talks about interest of all stakeholders, especially those who are disadvantaged, vulnerable and marginalized. Disclosure about the process is in the place of identify key stakeholders group of the company along with the providing details require frequency of engagement with each stakeholder group. Policy disclosure on each equal opportunity policies pursuant to right, personal disability, etc. 2016. Mechanism for receiving complaints and addressing them for employees and workers, including non-permanent employees and workers, should be consist considered in principle four. So in principle four, you have to out the stakeholders. Yeah, yeah, that is what Saloni said actually. You have to identify that uh, who are the stakeholders who are disadvantaged, vulnerable, and marginalized, and then list out, and then you have to work out the program. Right, Salome? Yes. And you are not only, uh, you know, you identify the stakeholders, you talk about the uh, various ways in which you are engaging with them, what has been the scope of engagement. So these will, you know, companies will fo be forced to now speak about, say, for example, you're speaking about your customers. So what are the things which are important to them? So you specifically list them out uh, over here. And then you also talk about the ways in which you are engaging with them and how frequent has it been. 
so uh, it is specifically requiring the companies to call out and come out there and speak about these things so in, suppose for your example like in your company uh, you must have called out the you know particular stakeholder who are this advantage or as such so can you further elaborate and explain in, on that yeah topic? so basically under uh, so there are two parts to this so when it comes to the essential indicators you generally speak about all the stakeholders that you engage with so right. this is uh, you know pretty standard for all of us so uh, it is the employees they are the customers so and like you you know mentioned that for all the organizations it would be the government and regulatory agencies that they are working with the communities in which they are uh, surviving their vendors the dealers for us specifically in nation paints it would also mean our influencers it would also mean the painter community which is so important for us the dealers who are our partners in this business right. um, employees etc so these would be the people uh, you know whom we would specifically identify and we would speak about the way in which we are engaging with them and uh, what are those topics which are important for them which you know kind of comes out of constant engagement so companies here will also be you know as we move ahead, to be required to engage with them and speak to them and understand the topics which are important to them disclose them over here and also showcase how these material topics which are important for our stakeholders are coming in the in the wave in which we are carrying out our businesses the uh, you know the goals that we are taking for the organization so are they streamlined with the expectations of our stakeholders Okay. so this is something you know which really comes out over here and as we move forward uh, there will be a lot of focus around this so the investors or the stakeholders generally reading through your report may come and ask you that look if this is a topic which is important to your stakeholder group what are you doing about it as an organization right so uh, that can you know be an outcome of this Other like like you rightly mentioned about that painter it's very uh, small uh, portion but very important very rightly you mentioned that they are uh, marginalized and so if you want to give example that how you attend that and the, how it can be that will give the idea how the things should be attended practically right. and report right. So if you're talking about, uh, so, the, so if I, you know, just look at the format and how we are look, required to disclose it. So if you identify a particular uh, stakeholder group, then you identify whether that stakeholder group is marginalized or not, or, or vulnerable or not. And uh, depending upon where they fall, you identify it like that. Then you speak about the uh, channel of communication with them. So for us, it would be constant engagement through contractors, dealers, through various right. skill enhancement programs that we do for the painter community. Um, uh, the trainings which we have in place uh, for them to use uh, paint products in general, not restricted to Asian paint products, enhance their skills, the various mechanized tools which are available, the various, uh, you know, um, I mean, just not restricted to the normal painting job, but the, uh, the textures, etc., that they can now get into to improve their livelihood or to, you know, just take it a step forward so those would be some of the initiatives that we are driving for them which can be spoken of over here uh, frequency can be anything so it could be on a regular basis it could be by way of some conferences that you have for them or in a set manner then the uh, scope of uh, engagement and the topics which are coming out as material topics for them could also be identified like you know safety uh, like uh, all of those topics can you know be identified over here then uh, when it comes to addressing uh, concerns of the vulnerable or marginalized stakeholder group companies can also you know through their csr initiatives that they are taking up uh, address this topic so they can speak about the uh, various areas in which they are working and if they are doing something specific for such a group that they have identified this can definitely find a place over here so right you connected this with the your esg efforts so that the community as such you this with this whether you are affecting adversely directly or indirectly and how with your uh, csr efforts the same can be corrected and you can be a contributory to the community as such definitely yeah right. i'll so, share with you here something you know the company where i was actually working this company was actually obtained what do you call that uh, quality certification iso 9000 when the quality certificates are ISO 9000 has been obtained by the company, then we had an internal committee where we have been actually discussing it that much. 
in fact the company has engaged almost about uh, 10 to 12 different uh, contract manufacturers when we are getting the thing done from the contract manufacturers is the contract manufacturer also iso 9000 certified or not if they are not iso 9000 certified can a company themselves can call their products are iso 9000 certified or not this was the question which actually came then ultimately company took up a call called all of them and told them look here this is what it is required to be done we will actually help you whatever the things are required to be done you better get it certified iso 9000 they got all their contract manufacturing people got certified iso 9000 and then only the company has actually truly said yes we are now iso 9000 certified company so the split is here you know to appreciate what is expected by the lawmakers not by going by the letter that is what it is required here when you are talking about engaging the people helping the people aiding the people that is what it is required here in each and every right so there is a question which i saw which is an important question yeah i was taking yeah please take yeah. it so which is on uh, risk management uh, under brsr so brsr definitely uh, will you know require to speak about uh, the risk management activities so uh, there is uh, a dedicated table which they have put in so which speaks about uh, how uh, you know the the company is uh, which are the material uh, issues which are which are the issues which are material to the company from the perspective of conducting its business and how do you see that uh, issue so is it a risk or is it an opportunity you can definitely classify it as both and in case you classify it as a risk then uh, what are the steps that you are taking to adapt or to mitigate the risk which is there and in case of uh, you know uh, uh, you are also required to speak about the financial implications of the risk or the opportunity, whether positive or negative on the business. So there is definitely, uh, you know, that whole risk aspect, which is getting covered in this format. I hope that answers. I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Ayushi. Principle five uh, consists of promotion of human rights. Businesses should respect and promote human rights Disclosure of training provided to employees, workers on company policies and human rights issues for current year as, as far as previous year should be disclosed. Disclosure of minimum wages paid to employees, workers, workers both should be disclosed in the BRR, BRSR report. Uh, principle 6 consists of protection to the environment. A business should respect, protect, and make efforts to restore the environment. Specific disclosure with respect of water withdrawal, surface water, groundwater, third-party water for current year and previous years should be disclosed. Principle 7 includes public and regulatory policy uh, regarding this uh, BRSR report. Uh, uh, principle 7 includes engagement in influencing public and regulatory policy and responsible and in a transparent manner. Disclosure related to trade and industry chambers association uh, being taken by the company on, on any issue related to anti-competitive conduct by the company should be disclosed. Principle 8 consists of inclusive growth and development. Business should promote inclusive growth and equitable development disclosure requirement required for social impact. Aishi, one minute. Yes. Uh, uh, Saloni, on principle 7, on the disclosure regarding trade industry and anti competitive action taken, you have any idea, uh, any experience or knowledge that that disclosed? Because it's a little tricky if it is uh, to be observed. Sorry, I had muted myself. Okay, so uh, so here the disclosure under essential indicators, basically you're, you're required to speak about any affiliations that you have with various trade uh, associations. So they, they could be either the, um, you know, the, the common ones like CII, FICI and uh, public affairs forums, etc. Or they could be something specific to your own industry. So say, for example, we have the Indian Paint Association. So uh, you could speak about, uh, you know, any of those affiliations that you have. And then we are also required to um, speak about any, uh, if the organization has been penalized or there is some corrective action that has been taken on anti-competitive conduct of the entity. So if there is uh, something 
of that sort which is uh, you know ongoing then organizations can definitely speak about it on the leadership indicators so you are required to take a position on uh, various public policy advocacy matters uh, so say for example uh, there are you know any public policy that you have advocated uh, advocated about which directly affects your business you can speak about uh, that particular topic that on which you have done a lot of advocacy in the form of uh, influencing the either the regulatory environment or bringing out a change uh, uh, either directly or through any industry forum uh, you can speak about the method that was uh, adopted how did you do it whether that information is available in the public domain or not and uh, you can give details about it so uh, this is about uh, the public policy position so uh, which you are required to speak of so essentially the disclosure uh, constitutes these three things trade organizations or industry forums with which you are associated any anti competitive practices and uh, uh, content around it and uh, public policy position advocated by the entity Thanks. already there is an interesting question is there yeah arsr is applicable based on market uh, capitalization of the company if one year we are falling under the 1000 However, in the next year, we are not falling, whether we are not to prepare BRSR. Yeah, so I guess uh, it, if the answer would be that if for the year of applicability is 20 to 23. So if for 20 to 23, uh, you know, uh, I mean, if you're qualifying, then you may choose to disclose. But however, my, uh, you know, suggestion here would be that uh, it is advisable always to go ahead and uh, adopt this disclosure. Um, and not, you know, kind of just seeing that last year I was there, but this year I'm not there. So I don't think you can take that sort of a chance saying that year to year identifying it. Because when it says in the particular year, we are yes, our reporting is for top thousand companies, then these companies are already there. They are not to continue to report. That's what I would say that you cannot have a choice year to year. I will identify this year. I will report mm -hmm. next year. I will Maybe. not report. Yeah. That's sort of the things is not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Swetha, the answer is by participant one thing always in as per LODR. Participant Saloni, there is uh, as regards your risk answer. With, yeah. that is, uh, you can say that basis on your feedback, how do we report a risk which cannot be quantified? That is a risk. Yeah. So, say for example, reputation risk is something that you know cannot be uh, really quantified. So, um, I think in that case, um, I think the question is more from the financial implication in case of a risk. So, uh, if I have to put at look at it from an AP perspective, I would you know look at it like an opportunity uh, for me more than uh, you know qualifying it as a risk. Uh, and wherever you cannot quantify it, you can probably put general statement like um, you know this this is a risk and we these are the things that we are putting in place for uh, you know mitigating it and uh, the impact financial implication would be an opportunity for the company to uh, improve the brand presence and opportunity through and a reputation through proactively managing the possible issues that come in place so wherever it is not possible to you know actually quantify i think a general statement would be accepted okay okay thank you yeah. Principle nine provides value to their customers and consumer in a responsible manner. Uh, we will discuss how to gather ESG data. Given the broad nature of ESG, companies should focus on those risks and opportunities that are most material to their businesses. In many cases, a company may have already identified its key ESG issue, but may also want to consult an established framework or standards such as sustainability accounting standard board for guidance on ESG and uh, opportunities that are typical for an industry. ESG framework and standards may indicate specific metrics on which a company should report and for which it will need a, to gather a data. We will discuss e what exactly ESG disclosure consists of. A few of uh, key disclosures sought in B uh, BRSR on ESG related parameters are highlighted under. Environmental related disclosure consists of 
uh, essential indicators uh, regarding environment are air emissions, extended produ producer responsibility, waste management, resource uh, usage. Uh, resource uh, resource use, uh, usage consists of energy consumption, water consumption, and withdrawal. Air emission consists of scope 1, scope 2, greenhouse gases, and air pollutant emission. Uh, extended producer responsibility consists of pollution control boards and performance achievement trade, scheme of Bureau of Energy Efficiency, etc. Waste management includes hazardous and non-hazardous waste generated, reuse and recycle along with waste management practices. Environmented, uh, and environment. You have taken scope one, scope two, what you are referring there? Uh, scope 1, Scope 2 is a standard disclosure for air emissions given under BRSR report. Oh. Uh, environment uh, environment related disclosure consists of leadership indicators which includes energy consumption mixed through renewa uh, renewable and non-renewable resources, water consumption in areas of water, Scope 1 and Scope 3 usually includes greenhouse gases, reclaimed products, etc., impact on biodiversity, etc. Uh, ESG disclosures related to social uh, uh, related disclosure includes employees, workers, community related, and consumer related. Disclosure on gender and social diversity measures for differently uh, abled employees, turnover rates, medium wages, welfare benefits to permanent and contractual employees, occupational health and safety trainings, et cetera. Community related disclosure include disclosures on social impact assessment, rehabilitation and resettlements, corporate social responsibility, et cetera. Consumer related disclosure include product labeling, product recall and product safety. Disclosure reporting structure under BRSR framework RS and uh, follows. Okay. Section uh, uh, I should you uh, should, I, should we just attend the question because I guess it was more relevant for the previous slide. If you could go on that one. Okay. So there's a question that when we speak about carbon emissions, uh, can you share some best practices adopted by organizations in the space of calculation and reporting of carbon emissions? So honestly, um, uh, you know, Delzad, if you look at it, each and every person uh, right now is either taking some carbon emission reduction targets or reporting around it. Okay. So there are various ways in which people are reporting on the whole carbon phase. So there is a disclosure under or CDP, which is the Carbon Disclosure Project. So if, if you know, detailed disclosure in this area is what is expected, uh, the company can report under the C CDP Disclosure Project. Other than that, companies can also align themselves to the TCFD framework, uh, which is available on Carbon Disclosure. Uh, all of these frameworks frameworks are basically not mandatory, but uh, you know uh, they can be used for the purpose of disclosures. And when it comes to uh, monitoring the emissions or you know setting targets, then there are these uh, science based studies etc, which are um, you know available and which organizations can undertake to understand the carbon emissions that the organization itself and and through its value chain partners is emitting and thereafter use these formats like CDP, TCFD, also BRSR and uh, GRI for the purpose of disclosure. Yeah, what you're saying is basically the carbon emissions which are actually happening mostly, you know, it might happen from the natural gas or the crude oil or the fossil fuels, etc., which we are using it when it is actually emitted to the atmosphere, then the environmental actually gets spoiled. So it is going to be a very harmful to the environment. In fact, there are actually carbon offsets which are actually available, which actually can be purchased to reduce. You not eradicate totally. Probably you can offset. You can actually eradicate. You can do. I think probably that is what we are going to be talking about. Uh, disclosure uh, disclosure reporting structure under BRSR framework are as follows. Section A consists of general disclosure covering operational, financial, and ownership-related information, 
Section B consists of management and process disclosure covering the structure, policies, and processes to be integrated under the guidelines. Uh, section C consists two things, performance disclosure and other disclosure. Performance disclosure consists of principle-wise performance indicators covering how well business are performing. Other disclosure consists of details of director, director responsible as per national voluntary guidelines, etc. There is one question is there. Is it advisable to get carbon emission calculation audited? Yeah, so uh, advisable, definitely, yes. It is uh, definitely advisable. That is the one yeah. thing. And second thing is there. I have seen actually nowadays in the market, there are actually a software which is available. This software actually once you put into the place, it actually gives you what is actually required, where you are actually standing, what is the actions required. That is another way of actually better monitoring. Getting auditing is actually a very good practice, I would say. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, assurance, a uh, lot of companies who do this assurance uh, certificates of the various indicators which have been disclosed. So uh, even in case of Asian Paints, we get a reasonable assurance done from a big four partner uh, who, you know, uh, audit and uh, give uh, an assurance certificate on the disclosures which have been made. So if uh, as such, not speaking about carbon emissions, but if an organization is speaking about them and has uh, taken certain targets and is also showing showcasing performance, uh, if you decide to get your sustainability report or your integrated report assured, uh, whether it is limited or reasonable, uh, in that case, uh, this aspect will also get covered and it definitely adds some value and credibility to the disclosures which you are making. So uh, auditing or assurance, uh, definitely, yes. Yeah, this will become, you know, a sort of authentic reporting activities because it will actually increase you know the trust and the confidence of the stakeholders who read the thing because it's the authentic information which is given by the companies challenges related to esg disclosures are as follows following are some of the challenges which may one be minute, faced. Uh, one minute uh, is it advisable to get carbon emission calculation audited yeah i think that we are uh, challenges related through transition issues. Previously, there were only finite companies uh, who have to report uh, under BRSR report, but uh, the new report says that uh, 1,000 companies by market capitalization should be reporting a BRSR report from a financial year 2022 to 23. The new companies which are coming under the reporting purview have relatively less experience in managing the related compliance and they are yet to get mature with respect of business responsibility reporting. The other challenges consist of restrictive disclosures. Since the business responsibility and sustainability reporting being a very specific format to be responded upon, prescribed by the regulators, companies may also find it restri restrictive and they may not be fully disclosing all the information related to overall initiative taken by the company. Authent uh, authent See, here, there is always a fear. You know, what happens is business is actually very much competitive. When the business is very much competitive, if you disclose something, how it will be seen by the competitor, whether my revenue is going to be affected, whether they will copy this. All these issues actually will come out in the mind of the people. That is another issue here, actually. So how much I know to disclose, I know to be, you know, selective in the disclosure. I should also see, I should safeguard my confidentiality. I should disclose what are the fresh initiative I'm taking, which will change my overall perspective. All those things will come into the picture here. Definitely. So I'm like I'm smiling now. So <laughs> I definitely don't want to speak about uh, that. But yes, that will that will always be something that you know when you are putting all those data out there, the whole uh, you know industry getting the competitive advantage out of you putting a certain. Correct, correct, correct. So Rani, you are coming from Asian paints. We actually see various paint companies advertisement in the team. Mm. Who's being best? Who's actually bringing out the new technology? What is the things and all this thing we see? We see Asian paints, we see Persian paints, we see all other things also there. That fear is definitely going to be here in this. Authentic authenticity of the information disclosed. In the new format of reporting, variety of enhanced disclosure are required to be made by the companies. However, one cannot find the mention of any third party assurance to be provided for the business responsibility and sustainability report. 
in the absence of any third party assurance on the disclosure made the question of authenticity and credibility is not addressed here so in this respect if you get audited that you see the better authenticity in the clear one of the questions yeah. the participant asked here deficiency in reporting in case of business responsibility and sustainability reporting it seeks enhanced and much more comprehensive details in the past national stock exchange takeover empowerment services report in the survey of environment social and governance were only applicable to 50 listed companies in india brought out many deficiency in reporting for various aspects in the business responsibility report as it is a new framework it will consist of a few deficiency in reporting so uh, here i just wanted to add uh, a couple of things so if you could go back to the previous slide yeah mm -hmm. so uh, here the way it works is that uh, there are going to be challenges because this is uh, you know the first year in which companies are going to report uh, so a lot of planning in advance is what uh, will be expected of uh, companies uh, you know because the reporting framework has always been there so if you are planning to disclose around it so plan in advance plus the challenging part is going to be the previous year data because you are required to at a lot of places to give a comparison to show how the movement has been and for the stakeholders also to make sense of the data you are required to give the previous year data also so that could be a challenge in some places so um, um, ensure that there are uh, you know structured mis is in place for collating this uh, information from the beginning itself uh, so that this information is available there are certain structures which are put in the organization for getting this information uh, the other thing uh, there could also so be some places where information is not available currently or you would you know start monitoring it uh, on a prospective basis companies can definitely call it out in their reports i think i don't think that that should be something that discourages organizations from disclosing in fact they could go ahead and call out those places where uh, you know certain information is deficient in their report and say that this would this is some or say it's a policy so you can always say that you are in the process of formulating it you can also give a timeline that gives a lot of credibility to the uh, statements that you are making and if there's some data which you currently are not collating then you can uh, call it out and say that you will start collating it and probably in the next phase this was practical and helpful thank you so much thank you so much for sharing this How does companies strike a fine balance between return on investment and investing in ESG compliant companies? Considering that companies which are not based in ESG per se could actually be giving very good investment return. Right. So, uh, definitely. So, uh, basically, uh, which is which is a true statement actually that if there are certain companies which are not best in ESG per se, may be giving very good investment returns. However, that there are a lot of uh, funds which are out there which are specifically investing in companies which have good ESG scores or, uh, you know, who are ESG compliant as they call it. So, it definitely uh, improves, uh, you know, the funding that the companies such. companies who have good esg disclosures uh, attract and uh, i mean there's honestly there's no uh, answer to this question because there could be such companies uh, yes but uh, nowadays with the push that is coming in from the institutional investors as such about companies to uh, take up these initiatives talk about it disclose move to the non financial parameters i think uh, it is going to be about time when uh, companies who have good disclosures around esg and are taking up initiatives will uh, you know see that kind of uh, i mean uh, you know they'll uh, they'll slowly start getting ranked low on the risk aspect and definitely uh, their credibility will uh, you know uh, be enhanced even in the uh, stock market uh, as such if that is what is being hinted at i think again it depends on the uh, company looking which investor the kind of investor because each uh, investor has their own criteria and the particular field and looking at it is quite subjective 
as such. Yeah, and, and in the long run, uh, definitely. Long uh, run, of course. Yes, the ESG risk uh, yes, the have a impact on business profitability and even uh, the survival. So uh, mainstream investors are definitely want to want, will be wanting to know what are the material ESG risk and how they have been identified and managed. So in the long run, definitely companies who are uh, uh, in this whole space will fare better. Absolutely, you are right, Sarvani, because I have been also talking to some of the friends who are actually putting their hard and money in the investment sector. And I was talking to them. They are certain set of the people, what they say very categorically, I will not invest in these companies because they are not having the good corporate government practices. I am not happy with the management, the way that business is actually being run. There are people who are actually becoming very selective about the company, about the management, about the compliances, about the ESG reporting, about the governance practices. All these things are all there. But as uh, participants actually put it, it could be a short run. It will not be in the long run. Long run, these are all the companies which are going to be, a, you know, AG investment companies and the good government companies, compliance companies. They are all going to gain in the long run. Those other things will go only for the short run. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, sector specific issues. The business responsibility and sustainability report format are designed in a generic nature and it does not seek sector specific information in its reporting. For some of the companies, few disclosure may not be relevant for the company which belongs to a particular sector. Comparatively uh, issues, huh? since the business responsibility and sustainability report structure is the same across all the companies and all the sector, the comparability between inter sectoral would be a challenge, especially from the point of view of investors. Voluntary disclosure. In the new format of business responsibility and sustainability reporting, the disclosure related to key performance indicators under the specified principle are categorized under essential indicators and mandatory indicators. Uh, uh, leadership indicators uh, uh, talks about voluntary uh, disclosure. Mandatory disclosure consists of reporting uh, being a regulatory compliance. The companies may offer disclosure that are called for mandatory and companies may choose not to disclose voluntary in indicators. Because there are issues here. When you talk about the voluntary disclosure, somebody also would say how the competition will get affected, how the company reputation will get affected, whether somebody will copy our initiative the moment we make the disclosure. These are all some of the issues which are actually going to come up. Uh, BRSR framework versus international reporting framework. SEBI has attempted to benchmark the business responsibility and sustainability reporting framework in India against some of the international reporting framework uh, prevalent across the world and also taking consideration of local sustainability challenges. The new format introduced is an attempt to bring the standardized pattern in the reporting of environment, social and governance reporting. In United Kingdom framework, under the provision of Companies Act 2006, the listed companies are mandatorily required to disclose in their an annual report the disclosure related to greenhouse gas emission, diversity, and human rights pursuant to Strategic and Director's Report Regulation 2013. In United, uh, in United States, the framework of ESG is as per the provision under Securities and Exchange, Exchange Commission all listed companies are required to make disclosure related to environment compliance expenses. Added to this, the companies are also required to make sustainability reporting as per New York Stock Exchange. In China, in China the framework of ESG reporting are through multiple regulations mandated for disclosure on sustainability matters. The Environment Information Disclosure Act 2008 mandates corporations to disclose environment information annually uh, through resource utilization, pollution levels, waste generation, disposal method, and some other aspects are as also expected to disclose voluntarily. Top companies for ESG reporting performance 2021 are as follows. The first company is Godrej Consumer Products Limited, uh, Infos Infosys Limited, Wipro Limited. Uh, the fourth is Tata Chemicals Limited, ITC Limited, Jubilant Life Science. 
ग्रेजिम इंडस्ट्रीज लिमिटेड वेदांता लिमिटेड टाटा पावर कंपनी लिमिटेड जे एस डब्ल्यू स्टील एक्सेट्रा so uh, your i just wanted to add that uh, you know uh, globally uh, these uh, gri reporting standards or on esg reporting is much advanced and has always been there in place and uh, i mean what brsr uh, is kind of you know wanting to do is definitely bringing that esg reporting in india and uh, um, i mean a lot of companies have always been disclosing around I, the adopting the iirc framework which is uh, which was there and since 2017 companies have been adopting that framework and disclosing under this this uh, framework actually standardizes stuffs and uh, and puts in a lot of qualitative and quantitative data points for uh, companies to report on which actually uh, is is very specific and can be compared across various companies in the same industry or across sectors as well what is esg investing esg investing is the consideration of environment social and governance factors alongside financial factors while making investment decision different investments like sustainable investing social responsible investing ethical investing and impact investing all form part of esg investing esg factors covers extremely broad range of issues from avoiding investing in tobacco companies to financing clean water initiatives today esg is considered by some of an asset class and an investment approach investors motivation for pursuing esg vary widely ranging from moral and religious belief to regulatory and legislative requirements public safety and economic reason uh, can, can you go back to one more slide back where you put the list of people for the best governed companies yes see here if you see the fifth place there is a itc is there. ITC yes. business is what basically a tobacco, tobacco company, which is actually harmful to the people. Yes, which is actually creating various uh, you know cancer diseases etc. and other things. And that one side we keep doing that, other side I am also doing the ESG related activities. I am ranked here. There seems to be you know one side I do for my business sake whatever I want to do. Other side. To rectify that, I do something like this. And uh, Mr. Bala, the yeah. IT, uh, the ESG reporting of ITC is really good. That is true. Yeah. But when it comes to the business, it is how yeah. it is to the community. So it's now again it depends on the uh, which era you are coming now. Yeah. Then liquor is also the same way. Correct, correct. Yeah. You are right. Absolutely, you are right. I keep doing the same. And the offload by sin by going to Lord Vijayeshwara and put a lot of money in his box. So I'm offloading my sin. So, no? uh, like liquor is the part of life for Western countries. <laughs> There are certain community in India which is part of their life from early age. Also, they they have that. Now, how you put it that it is bad and kind of thing. It is to be seen accordingly. The same way in many other industry that we we see. Yeah, correct. You're right. Absolutely, you're right. It's become quite subjective, and rightly it was questioned that, and that's why again how we have to look at that how investor they themselves give the criteria. Yeah. And the uh, you know grading for different industry and then the reference. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, what are ESG funds? ESG funds are basically funds where uh, capital is allocated in the bonds and shares of the companies which prefer well-known criteria like environment, social, and governance. It is invested in companies which adopt sustainable uh, sustainable practices in their operation. Importance of ESG fund. ESG funds are so relevant for the community that uh, investors' point of view, it is important as the governance is. Also, a uh, focus on renewable energy and environmental issues, and it is expected that the tax will be imposed in future on companies generating high pollutants in the environment. 
factors to be considered by selecting esg funds the companies with higher esg scores need to be selected one should consider the companies which are active performing their corporate social responsibility the products of the company should be manufactured in eco friendly manner companies which are creating a positive social impact in the society should be given the first preference and have a strong corporate governance and ethics top esg funds in india are Uh, India saw the biggest quarterly asset growth globally as an asset of ESG funds doubled to over nine thousand five hundred crore as of December two thousand twenty one. Uh, the top ESG funds are as follows: SBI Magnum Equity ESG having a fund size of three thousand four twenty eight crores, Axis ESG Equity having a fund size of one thousand nine not seven crores, ICSI Prudential ESG. Having a fund size of almost one thousand six hundred crores, Kotak ESG opportunities at Aditya Birla Sun Life ESG, uh, Asset ESG Sector Leaders ETF, Quantum Indian uh, ESG Equity, and Quant ESG Equity. These are the top ESG funds one investor can invest in. Ah, uh, Dalzad is really actively participating. Ah, uh, Dalzad, thanks for that. Can you kindly share some best practices adopted and disclosed by Indian companies in the space of diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yeah. So, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. This the uh, DEI is you know amongst the most talked of. uh under the whole uh, esg space uh, if you look at it and uh, the principle 3 of the brsr uh, you know will uh, promote a lot of companies to talk about this so uh, some of the uh, i mean uh, the practices which we have seen uh, companies adopt and which are adopted uh, by asian paints also uh, include a lot of you know uh, i mean uh, so so say for example when we when we look at from the disabled uh, workforce perspective so a lot of infrastructure building uh, within the organization at manufacturing locations at your other warehouse locations to make sure that the uh, setup is friendly for uh, the disabled uh, employees uh, to you know uh, function other than that uh, a lot of policies uh, in place for uh, say Uh, from the whole maternity and paternity perspective flexible working hours for all employees work from home opportunities uh, on the inclusion perspective uh, there are a lot of uh, initiatives that we see around ungender so uh, you know or uh, not um, I, i mean a lot of the workforce and uh, people nowadays do not relate to a particular gender etc so there are a lot of uh, initiatives around ungendering not stereotyping uh, giving uh, employees the freedom to uh, call out and be who they are and you know a lot of those uh, inclusive initiatives uh, are what we are seeing around uh, in the corporate world these days You see, there are a lot of companies who have been actually doing a lot of things which is uh, not coming into the light actually. In fact, I happen to know because I was associated with the Warapong group of uh, companies almost about five years. So in this group, what they have done is they actually wanted to encourage the women. The women force in the management and leadership roles in the Warapong group. I am not talking about Warapong idea. I am talking about the Warapong group. or upon pmc the group which is actually working which is rendering the it services sector and telecommunication etc and other things the logistic logistic so there really speaking they had a management and the leadership roles of the women 31% is actually there in that group and it means they have a vision they want to increase this to 50% by the year 2030 that is actually the vision statement which is actually put forward they have been actually encouraging the women they have been giving the women preference in fact there are recruitment take place giving preference to the women i have seen lot of company secretaries who are actually qualified women secretary they are working this company. so there are lot of companies who are actually taking initiative when it comes to the practices etc and you know going for the diversity issue compliance issue bringing the best governance issue There are a lot of companies which are actually doing it. Some of things is not coming to the light to us. 
right so uh, there's are also uh, you know when it comes to dei it is not only restricted to uh, say maybe gender diversity or to uh, having and welcoming the disabled workforce it is also um, you know involves a lot of things like equal pay for equal work Correct. so there's no bias around uh, you know uh, gender and all of those equal pay for equal work uh, which are some of the initiatives that companies are doing also it involves a lot it, it is a larger concept wherein a lot of uh, companies like amazon ikea etc are you know recognizing promoting and supporting the local communities uh, in the form of the goods and services that they are offering they are uh, you know giving opportunity to the uh, regional and the local community to come out there and showcase the art and the um, i mean the skills that they have in terms of the products that they are offering so these would also be some of the uh, initiatives that the corporate world can disclose around a diverse under the DEI space. So the way we look at it is that uh, gone are those days when you look at DEI only from the perspective of gender diversity or from the perspective of uh, having an inclusive workforce. It has gone much beyond that uh, to also the uh, uh, I mean, your the, the suppliers that you are screening, the products and services that you are offering. And yeah, you're right. Actually, in fact, uh, I have seen some of the companies, they have published their uh, policy document, what we call titled as the Equal Opportunity Employer. That policy is also, I have seen actually some of the companies. You also might have come across. Yes. Not only that, even uh, the consumers, how they can be included in improving the quality and all that, that different way we can look at it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, let's discuss data gathering and verification of ESG data. Developing and documenting rigorous reporting procedures may pose a challenge for many companies. For example, companies may gather ESG data through enterprise resource planning and financial reporting system. Second, companies should ensure that the data collection process is of sufficient quality for review if the company decide to get third-party assurance. Companies should also look to standardize their processes and create a central responsibility or reference for ESG data. Data management system for ESG related data should be formalized and automated if possible. Companies should try to integrate ESG data with ERM systems. The appropriate personnel to gather the information may already be apparent, particularly if it involves data that a company is already tracking. Process. Process involved in data review and verification. Companies should establish process for ESG data to be reviewed and verified by appropriate functional areas, including the process by which data is collected and analyzed. Uh, companies should, uh, in, in order to uh, form BRSR report, the companies should fo uh, follow the process involved in data review and verification in this manner. Uh, developing pro policies, board oversight, third party assurance, management oversight, coordination with disclosure committees, leveraging exi existing policies and procedures. So I just wanted to add over here on the uh, previous slide. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, when it comes to ESG reporting, uh, ERM uh, and you know, companies have to now move beyond uh, uh, collating data for the purpose of, you know, through the ERM systems, etc. Because for a lot of environment related data, non-financial data does not really come in from these financial reporting systems which are in place. So say, for example, the scope two, scope three emissions that uh, require, disclosure requirements are under ESG are there is no way of uh, collating it through these uh, financial reporting systems and ERM uh, etc systems which are there in place so companies will definitely be required uh, to uh, develop those kind of systems put in those kind of MISs and processes uh, with uh, you know constant reporting uh, so and reconciliations which are happening on a month on month or a quarter on quarter basis to uh, you know enable them to actually disclose this information at the end of the year so uh, it is definitely uh, going beyond these usual financial reporting systems which are there in place uh, ESG disclosure related to governance uh, role of board in sustainability conduct related authenticity of the information disclosed 
in uh, in esc disclosure uh, board board com, uh, plays an important uh, part statement from director responsible for the report is to be highlighted uh, through sustainability related challenges targets and performance conduct related disclosure includes fines penalties action taken by regulatory authorities or judicial initiatives or any law enforcement agency or any other principles authenticity of information disclosed to be given in new format of reporting variety of enhanced disclosures are required to be made by the companies and should be reviewed by third party um so um sorry ayushi can you go back to that slide i just wanted to make a small point yes so um, when it comes to you know role of the board in sustainability it is an encouraged practice to uh, have a dedicated committee of the board which looks at uh, this esg vision and mission that the companies would have taken and encourages them as well as supports them in delivering uh, the chosen you know in the chosen path of esg disclosure so this is also something that you know companies can consider to um, ensure that uh, esg related uh, aspects are discussed in a structured manner in a you know with a focused group a small group of committee members of the board and also the required push from the top is uh, very much there and uh, is out there to even support the management when it comes to um, uh, you know speaking about the disclosures and taking up uh, these goals ESG investing is still in its infancy and a novelty to many investor and how it will evolve in the years ahead is far from clear but while its future is unwritten there are varied approaches to ESG the world's largest asset owners have already rendered their judgment whatever it looks like ESG is future of investing in short board should consider taking responsibility for ESG and ensure they have the right people to do so they should consider developing protocols to identify factors that are important and integrate them into their decision process and compensation plans they should also make sure reporting is adequate and to be mindful of potential liability companies from all industries should be proactive in assessing their esg reporting practices and consider implementing well recognized standard frameworks this concludes your presentation right yes okay thank you ayushi okay presentation if any participant has any questions or yeah ppt will be shared with everyone who are participants any point salon is specifically you would like to point out ayushi for a uncommon topic like this i must congratulate you you are excellently done very good in putting the things together and bringing out the things thank you great, sir great job you have done ayushi thank you sir yes alone you want to say anything specific on this topic as such um sure i think i want to thank uh, ayushi first of all and uh, deepthi you and bala sir for organizing uh, a session on this topic because uh, you know like uh, we discussed uh, a lot of um, i mean there's not a lot of discussion which is happening especially in a company secretaries forum on uh, esg related disclosures uh, to in conclusion i you know want to second what uh, ayushi has put up on the slide that uh, this is a developing concept uh, it's you know in it, it is in its nascent stage currently uh, these disclosures are developing in india we are seeing these of uh, Uh, reporting frameworks which are coming in from the regulatory uh, industries so i think there is a lot of scope uh, for all of us you know even as company secretaries or finance professionals to uh, do our bit uh, in these uh, reporting frameworks and you know take it just beyond reporting i mean just not uh, leave it to reporting so i think um, i mean that 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 will be my concluding uh, remark because uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, development happening when it comes to the reporting framework they are becoming more and more diverse and complex uh, and i uh, see this esg related reporting investing and a lot of focus on uh, esg your to stay thanks saloni so we can say that it is a new area of uh, practice or the profession or involvement of company secretary company secretary is expected to get involved more and more the secretarial department depending on the structure and the requirement can involve and 
get involved with each and every aspect of the business and we can say that ESG, CSR and more and more and governance, compliance, everything is one umbrella of CS profession. And we can be truly KMP for the company. With this word, I thanks Saloni for her valuable time and sharing her experience, knowledge with the participants. Thanks a lot for that. As usual, Mr. Bala, thanks for your contribution. Ayushi, thanks for your good presentation. And I must thanks Desar for active participation. Thanks a lot. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. Okay, bye. bye.